Greetings, this is Darvain and welcome back to Let's Play Planescape Torment. First off, we've got some maintenance to do. So. Basically we're going back to the, to the North East section of the hive. Where we're going to collect on a couple of quests. First off, let's head over here. Your lips pinned back as not. Have you news for Sevton? Found the staff dogs barking and penned three of them in a dead book. Updated my journal. The powers be not blind to the justice this day. The woman reaches into a spud like hair and draws forth a copper earring. Here you are. A pretty bit as she fetch. It's worth 33 coppers at least, I'm sure. Long to one of my sisters, but she won't be needing it anymore. Farewell. Goodbye, Sevton. Ingress, she's huddled inside a cloak with dirty rags and teeth chattering. She's glancing furtively about her. She's expecting to be attacked at any moment. Greetings, Ingress. Heh, you. What is it you want me now? You want me to leave, not leave in the city, so I not. can't try it. It's not a city. It's a prison everywhere. Ingress, I found someone who can take you back to your home plane. Ingress falls silent. I want to go. I want to leave this place. His name is Candrian. He should be along shortly to help you. Trust him, alright? Where says nothing. Merely nods, her teeth chattering inside her mouth. I'll go back and meet with Candrian at the Smoking Corpse Bar and make sure everything turned out alright. Be strong, Ingress. Updated my journal. A hook He's nose and two stubby horns, big jump from his forehead. He's stumbling about and muttering himself, he thinks of Brian right Vonnegut and Cheek right Greetings. Eh, the man script, switch bro. What is it? What? Never mind, sorry to bother you. Cadrin stands as you approach him. The two women wanted to have you use. She says, holding out his hand. She wanted to express her thanks, even at the bounce book as it were, and be done with the damn things. In the palm of his hand, the ingress is darcy feet. It smoothly quotes them into your hand. Enjoy them, seeker. Updated my journal. 
Okay, Ingress's teeth. It's a handful of Ingress's living teeth. Apparently they didn't want to go with her back through the port to her home plane. They rattled against themselves whenever they held too close together. They remind you of a bunch of creepy ivory hovering, hovering popping bugs. Now, to change the teeth to a different type, select use. Teeth may gain new options and abilities as more goes up in levels. Yes. These are only useful by more. Examine Ingress's teeth. You can't check their resemblance to ivory bugs. You get the feeling they are looking at you expectantly awaiting some command. I want you to do piercing damage. Teeth chat elongate into sharp fangs. Done. So yeah. Bite, one three piercing. English's teeth, one to six piercing. Hey. So yeah, you can do piercing damage now. Which is good. Uh, let's have a look on, let's do a catch up on a few journals. Yeah, we got what we want to do. I think we want to resolve the bar tab. Okay, what have we got? Find the source of Farrog's body for Emmerich. I spoke with Dustman Naomi Emmerich, who not only knew the collector Farrog, but was suspicious of Farrog's fresh supply of corpses that he was dropping off of the mortuary. Offered to look into the matter, and Emmerich promised to reward me for finding out where the corpses come from. Java Bar Tab. Barkis, the barkeeper, the smoking corpse, asked me to take care of an outstanding bar tab. The victim, the victim is named Morka. Talk to Norak for Emmerich and do what Norak asks you. As part of my quest to join the Dustman Fan, Emmerich has asked me to speak to Norak. Also in the government dot and do really ask me. Track down a thief disguised as a dustman. Narok, a dustman in the gathering dust bar, bade me to track down a thief disguised as a dustman and stop him from further soiling the faction's name with his actions. Okay. So look at what we've got. Defeat the intruder in the Gordian mausoleum for the spirit guardian. Slain the intruding necromancer for the spirit guardian spoke of his power broken and dead no longer walk. Pause, more no arc will be pleased. Septa. I returned to Septa after penning three of those starved ducks in the dead box. She was grateful and gave me a copy earring its pavement. Spoke to Candra Neilborn at the Smolding Corp site and he knew of the portal that Ingress walked through. I asked for his help and he agreed to guide her back. I went and told Ingress and then met Cadrin again. Turns out Ingress level 11 teeth as pavement. I'll try not to spend them all in one place. For Agner from his dead contract. I brought Agner's contract to him and tore it into pieces before his eyes, freeing him of his obligation to the dustman. Can some out of the walking dead. I returned to now and told him I had solved the problem in the mausoleum. Okay. So who have we got? Ignis is a party member. There is a burning man hovering in the air over the grill in the smouldering corpse bar. His skin bubbles and chars. Flames pour from his tormented eyes. Yet his expression is far away, almost as if he were reveling in the flames. Who else we got? Dacon. Dacon in a gift array. One of the tight lipped people from Limbo. His skin is yellow and light. He appears to be old and pain haunts his bl small black eyes. He carries a blade of strange metal. Let's see we've got. Barrier. Half man, half goat, all attitude. The barrier are a rough and tumble warriors of a nomadic race. Straightforward people with a zest for life. From what they've seen, they tend to keep it to themselves. Black Abyssai. An Abyssai is one of the least forms of baiters are a race of lawful fiends that seeks to impose cruel, ty cruel tyranny on the face of evil. A black Abyssai is the lowest of the Abyssai, ranking below the green and the red forms. They're the infantrymen and skirmishers of the blood war. They're malicious and compared to the rest of the Bastu race, not terribly clever. Ebb Creeknees. Ebb Creeknees is an old Harmonium member who seek, seems to be content enough to sit in his chair at the smouldering corpse and run his mouth for whoever will listen to him. 
is a font of information if you can get past all long-winded explanations. Fell. Fell is a fallen Dallas, a former servant of the Lady of Pain and one of the few remaining priests of the dead god of portals, Eoska. He has achieved some renown as a tattoo artist, somehow bringing his pictures to a kind of life. Simply return to Fell with toys with your exploits and you can sketch them on your skin and allow you to draw strength from them. Giftsray! The Giftsray is the long separated kin of the Gift Yankee, and where their former brethren are cruel and vicious, the Giftsray are quiet and reserved, burning with a passion that drives them far beyond the most mortals are capable of. They dwell in limbo, in ever shifting seas of chaos, making their fortress homes impregnable against the attacks of the natives of that plane. They speak in metaphors and legends and carry themselves with quiet nobility. Harlot. A sad fact of life, often the only way a woman has to survive is by selling her body and mind to mounts desperate for companionship and release. It is an unfortunate commentary on the hive that so many prostitutes litter the streets. Uh, see, huge shot of fog. Some folks are just born large. Some of them use their abnormal physique to intimidate others and travel through life terrorizing those who are smaller. They tend to favor born over brains and sadly too often they get away with it. Lady of Pain, Merchant. In all places, in all times, there seem to be merchants. Their desperate grubbing for money and material gain is pathetic, yet their greed mirrors the commerce of the human soul. In Sigil, as in other places, they sell whatever anyone else is willing to buy. Poclass Townie. Power and wealth create privilege, a private law for those who know how to use them properly. When used correctly, they can create more wealth and power and keep a perpetuating cycle that shuts out the less fortunate and sometimes victimizes them. In Sigil, this means that you'll run into a supercilious breed of human whose experience tends to be limited by what is right and proper. This man is a fine example of that. Wizards, some people devote themselves to a life of the blade, thinking with their hues. Others pursue a more lastness clear, letting their fingers do the talking. Still more, produce no special vocation, plodding dully through the tedium of their daily life. That's not the wizard. The wizard seeks to understand and funnel the energies of the multiverse through his body, learning the secrets of existence and twisting them to achieve his own ends. They are dangerous foes, for they understand much and seek to compliment still more. Some of them are mere hedge wizards. Some achieve true greatness. Okay. Journal. Lots to read, lots to read. Drusella, who stands by the door in the smouldering corpse bar, told me of the man burning over the grill. His name is Ignis, and he was apparently the best mage to come out of the hive in ages. His rivals open a channel to the elemental plane, fire through him, and keeps him alive by sheer concentration. Powerful man indeed. I spoke with Cadrian about ingress, and he said that he would guide her home. He told me to go to her to wait for him and meet him at the smouldering corpse bar. Cadrian told me of the plane of Castria, the great prison plane. He says that the only way to escape the prison is to be stronger than the prison keeper. He said that the bonds of the plane are greater than flesh. Cadrian told me of a puzzle box in the heart of Limbo, something that seemed to be a seed of law in the churning sea of chaos. Cadrian told me of his trip into the negative material plane, a place where existence falls away into nothing. I spoke to bark in Wilder outside the smouldering corpse bar. To my surprise, not only did he seem to know where my journal is, he said there was more than one of them. He has said one of them was on the walls of a tomb sealed deep beneath the city where the stones weep. Another was in my cupboard in the guest room in his hall of sensates, and that there were others to be found as well. Don't know how much to trust his information, but he actually seems sane when he mentioned the journals. Dacon has taught me much of this gifts array language. It seems to be based on metaphors and stories. I don't know all the specifics, but if I ever hear a new term, I can ask Dacon to tell me the meaning. Farrell said he knew me, but that he couldn't tell me my story. But the strangest thing was the reason. He said he cannot because he cannot change the nature of a man. 
I returned to Seftai after killing three of the staff dogs. In exchange, he gave me a copper earring for my services and thanked me for avenging her sisters. I told Ingress that Kadrian had come to help guide her back to her home. I'll meet Kadrian back at the Smolding Corpse Bar to make sure that everything turned out alright. On returning to Kadrian after he freed Ingress from Sigil, he presented me with a gift from her, her dancing teeth. Delightful. Okay. Uh, what do I want to do now? Um... I am it's a bit short for an episode but considering the next thing we want to do is going to be the southwestern corner of the hive and it's going to involve a lot of talking and yeah carrying up because it probably do be an episode to go around and then an episode to go into all the buildings so I think I am going to save it here um, so yeah this has been Darvain doing let's play Planescape Torment if you like what you see in here be sure to like subscribe share comment please consider sponsoring me on Patreon and until next time goodbye <laughs>